Let's jump into the last part of this lesson, which is dealing with type one and type two errors. And let me get rid of this so we don't need that. Okay, so the learning objective is to interpret these errors in context and talk about consequences. So if you remember the bottled water crisis, the water crisis in Flint, Michigan a couple of years ago, I'm just trying to kind of recreate that here. So what I would suggest doing is this. There's about eight questions. There is eight questions, not about. This activity is meant for you to lead yourself through it, not for me to. And you to kind of pick up and make some mistakes and try, try and learn the content without being taught the content right now. So what I want you to do is pause the video, work through this activity, questions one through eight. Don't get caught up in, is this right? Is this wrong? I don't care. I'll summarize that for you and get you on the right path in a minute. So pause the video and go ahead and do that. And then let's talk through. Okay, looking at this. So here's what we know. This safe drinking level is 70 PPT. I see units, I immediately know this is quantitative, this is talking about means. So the null hypothesis would be mu is equal to 70. The alternative is mu is greater than 70 they believe that the water might be unsafe. It's only gonna be unsafe if it's over this. And it tells us that there. So the null is that the water is safe. The alternative is that the water is not safe. Interpreting a p-value, been there, done that. This is the idea of assuming the water is safe or assuming the true, uh, what is the name of this chemical? PF. Yeah, okay. Anyways, assuming that mu is equal to 70 parts per trillion, there is a 0 0.045 probability of getting a sample result of 70.5. That was our sample mean or more purely by chance. So kind of unlikely to happen by chance. Number three, based on the p-value, should we keep the current water or switch? Well, let's think about our conclusion. We would reject the null because the p-value is less than alpha equals 0.05, so we would have convincing evidence for the alternative. Because we have convincing evidence for the alternative, that means we're concluding that the water is not safe, so we should switch to bottled water because we have convincing evidence that this level is above 70, 70 not 70.5. All right, well, what if we, what if we mess up? So what if we switch to bottled water when in fact the water is safe? Well, then we waste a bunch of money and resources on all this bottled water when good old tap water is, is safe. Given the water is safe, how often will this occur? I'm assuming you were like, what? I have no idea how to do this. Maybe you figured it out. That's going to happen 5% of the time. That's the probability of we make a what's called a type one error and we'll delve into that a little bit more now suppose the p-value is 0.14 should the town keep the current water or switch well now we should do the opposite we should keep the current water because we don't have convincing evidence that the level is over that 70 parts per trillion so what happens if that decision's wrong well uh people start drinking unsafe water probably get sick maybe pass away like that's a huge issue. So when you get to question eight, to me, the consequence in number seven is much more serious than the consequence in number four. Number four, we're, we're spending some extra time and money and resources on bottled water. But in number seven, you, you're putting people at risk, their health at risk. So I'll tell you this. A lot of times on the AP exam, they'll ask you what's a type one error, what's a type two error in context, and then they'll talk about what are the consequences. And they may even ask which consequence is worse. That's subjective. You can argue that either way. So I put in here a little note, go over the jury mistakes. So going back to the court of law idea, they may convict someone who is innocent and, or they might let somebody go who is guilty. These are the type one and two, type two errors that we're talking about here. So important ideas. A type one error, we're, if the null is true and we're making the wrong decision, this does not look like your paper. I knew I updated it. But, eh, there we go. So type one error, the null is true, but we reject the null. 
So the null hypothesis is true, but we find convincing evidence for the alternative. It has to be a mistake. Type 2 error, the alternative is true, but we fail to reject the null. So the alternative is true, but we don't find convincing evidence for the alternative. I like this little table here. It's just a nice reminder of two of these four scenarios represent a good thing. We make the right decision. The alternative is true and we reject the null. Hey, that's good. The, the null is true and we fail to reject it. That's good. But here are the type one and type two errors that we have been speaking about. If the null is true, I'm sorry. Yeah, if the null is true, but we reject it, that is a type one error. And the probability we make a type one error is sig sigma, no, not sigma, alpha. Whatever your significance level is, typically 5%. So there's a 5% chance that you make a type one error. And that's really what they were asking back in number five. And then if the alternative is true, the probability that, I'm sorry, if the alternative is true and we fail to reject the null, that is a type two error. So we're going to delve into these two errors a little bit more on this next page. So we have this scenario with the fast food restaurant. They want to reduce the proportion of drive through customers who have to wait more than two minutes. Makes sense. No one wants to wait for their food or drink. So we have the scenario. The null is that the proportion of customers who have to wait two minutes longer than two minutes was 63%. They're trying to reduce this. Okay. So type one error in context. What I'm going to use is this idea as a template. The null hypothesis is true, but we find convincing evidence for the alternative. So 63% of customers have to wait longer than two minutes. But we find convincing evidence that less than 63% of customers wait more than two minutes. Now, I would encourage you, unless you are like really, 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 really certain about less than greater than symbols, don't use them. Because I've noticed way too many times students like want to write the less than symbol and they write the greater than symbol. Just write the word. It takes literally one second more. So this is an error, an absolute error. You could say concluding that the customers have to wait longer than two minutes when in fact they don't. I mean, there's a couple ways to state it. I'm just using the structure that I provided you. All right, that was a type one error. Type two error, my goodness, I write small number in my room. This is the alternative is true. So more than 63% of, I'm sorry, less than 63% of customers, that's type one, have to wait greater than two minutes. But we don't find convincing evidence that less than 63% of customers wait over two minutes. Kind of ran out of room there. So that's a type two error. The alternative is true. Less than 63% of their customers had to wait longer than two minutes, but we didn't find enough evidence for that. So which error is more serious? Justify your response. I would say, let's think through this. In scenario one or type one, we think we're making the problem better, but in fact, we're not. So customers are still having to wait, but we think it's better, so we don't do anything about it. In scenario two, it got better, but we didn't think it did, so we continue to like try to make the wait time better. To me, scenario one seems worse because... Um, what they're asking to do is assigning an extra employee to the drive through because the manager thinks the extra employee helps. 
but in reality, they don't. So ultimately, customers still waiting more than two minutes in the drive-thru, which they're trying to avoid. This is not the letter I, it's type one. I should have written type one. Based on your answer to question two, do you agree with the company's choice of alpha equals 0.1? Remember, the probability you make a type one error is equal to sigma. Why do I keep saying sigma? Alpha, which is your significance level. So we just said that's really bad. So no, I don't think this is a good idea. We would want a significance level of lower, like 5% or 1%. So no, because there's a 10% chance of making a type one error. We should use a lower level of alpha. We want to minimize a type one error because we just said it was bad. Okay. And then number four, been there, done that. Assuming the true proportion of customers who have to wait more than two minutes is 0.63. That's assuming the null is true. There is a 0.035 whatever probability of getting a sample result of 0.576 or less. Why or less? Because the alternative is less than, purely by chance. Okay, so we rolled in some new stuff with some old stuff. The last part of this lesson is going to be just more of the same. So. Go ahead, pause the video. You have an opportunity to do type one and type two errors in context a couple times. And the top question, you get to actually talk about um, the consequences. So go ahead, pause it, work through this page, please. Let's take a look at this top question. You'll notice I've written the type one and type two errors slightly differently here than the structure I showed you. I just did that to show you kind of different ways and I write it differently sometimes myself. So one thing I'd like to do here is put in words what this means. If the true proportion of blemished potatoes is 8%, then they're going to keep the potatoes or, or less than 8%. And if that's more than 8%, then they're going to send the shipment back. So type one error, we reject the null, but the null is true. So 8% of the potatoes are blemished. That's true but we determine it's actually greater percent. Consequence, we send good back good potatoes and we waste, we waste the time and energy of like another truck having to be drive back out with good potatoes. Type two error, I'm talking about the alternative being true. So greater than 8% of the potatoes are blemished, but we think 8% are. So what do we do here? We accept a bad load of potatoes and the chips that we make are probably gonna have a lot of blemishes on them and result in poor customer satisfaction. They're like, ah, these chips are nasty. I don't wanna buy these. The last question. So we have this null of three and the alternative is less than three. The null is that the bulb lasts enough and the alternative is that the ball burns out early. So type one error, the null is true, but we reject it. So it's true that the bulbs last an average of three hours, but we conclude that they last less than three hours. Doesn't ask for a consequence. Type two error, the alternative is true, but we don't find convincing evidence for it. So the bulbs actually last less than three hours, but we conclude that they last three hours because we didn't find convincing evidence for the alternative. That's it. That's it for lesson 9.1. We've come a long way. There's a lot in here. So please make sure you're diligent. You put the time and effort into this because when you come back next week, when we hit section 9.2, we're going to take all this stuff that we learned and apply it to um, formal significance tests for proportions. Hope you have a great week off. If you need anything, shoot me an email and I'll get back to you. Thanks.